Pit Lane is proudly brought to you by DinoTech by Dino Dynamics. For your nearest workshop, visit our website. And with the support of the Ramada Resort, Phillip Island. Welcome back to In Pit Lane here, coming to you from the Grand Prix City, Melbourne, RMIT Studios, right across Melbourne on C31 Melbourne and Geelong. Well, coming up in a couple of weekends' time, down at Phillip Island is the Shannons Nationals and the second round of the Australian GT Championship. And it's a stellar field, over 26 cars and quality like you wouldn't believe. Not just in cars, but championship drivers as well. Speaking of championship drivers, the guy who's leading the championship at the moment after an absolutely incredible performance out at Sandown is is our guest tonight. He started from the rear of the grid in the first race. That didn't worry him. He came through and won anyway. Then he dominated again on Sunday. This uh, Next weekend, down at Phillip Island, he'll be running once again in his Erebus Mercedes alongside of Jack LeBrock, who drove the car last year, and he was dominant in that car down there as well. They are certainly going to be a very, very tough act to beat. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the program, Richard Musket. Richard, welcome to Inpit Lane. Thanks for having me. Now, first of all, let's go back to Sandown. Uh, that was a great performance. I mean, you're coming from the, the back of the, the grid. You had problems in qualifying. When you lined up at the rear of the grid, I mean, did you really think that you were going to get through and actually win the race? Or what were you actually hoping for? Um, well, the, the first thing we hoped for was, you know, get around the first corner. Like, being behind 26 or 27 cars is, you know, is, um, just a difficulty in just getting through the first corner just in that. So... You know, Major stayed out of trouble at the first couple of laps and um, got through um, unscathed, so that was a, a good plus. And I you know, just set my head down and tried to get n nice, clean, consistent laps. And yeah, we, we, we thought we'd had a chance. We, we had good speed in practice on the day, but on the Friday, unfortunately, um, qualifying didn't go to plan. We had a technical issue, but um, yeah, the, the boys at Airbus Motorsport, you know, do a top-class job, and it yeah, will wrap for the, the Saturday result. When you're in a position like that, you're coming off uh, the rear of the grid and going through uh, a lot of slower, a lot of slower cars. Do you uh, do you clue some of those guys up first? Does somebody from the team perhaps go around and say to them, "Look, you know, Richard's coming from behind. He's going to keep an eye on your mirrors." No, all, all, the guys, all the guys in the Strange Eddie Championship know who they're racing, so it'd, it'd be you know not very smart for a, 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 um, a G, uh, like a, a, an outright car dicing with a you know a slower class car just. It wouldn't make any sense for both cars. So everyone knows, all the drivers know that they've got a job to do. So everyone, you know, gives racing room and that's GT racing. Good to make your way past the faster and slower cars as quickly as possible and as cleanly as possible. So, yeah, we just have to stay out of our way, give you know, plenty of racing room and everyone respects that. Of course, Erebus is a very, very professional organisation. We know them through V8 Supercars, of course. They started in GT racing and have been successful not just here in GT racing, but also overseas as well. Last year in Asia, they were very successful, showed they're a world-class outfit on a number of occasions. How did you uh, come to get the drive with them this year? Uh, well, I tested with Erebus uh, mid last year for that drive at... M Matthew Solomon got the drive um, late last year with Mika Hakkinen at um, Zuhai, and I was one of the drivers up for that seat as well, and unfortunately I missed out, but... Um, I've been in touch with Erebus you know, ever since then, and I was actually in Europe when they gave me the, uh, the phone call just to say, do you want to have a drive in the Australian G GT Championship for 2014? So we had to consider that, and I was over in Europe and went to Amsterdam and you know, checked out Asia as well, so we are definitely looking at a few series, but um, ended up choosing Australian GT Championship with Erebus Motorsport. Of course, you came out of, out of Porsches, and uh, I, I suppose looking at them from a distance, you couldn't get two more diametrically opposed race cars, one with the engine as far back as you, as you can get, and another one with a billiard table in front of you with a great big lump of, of engine in, at, the, at the front end. How different are they to drive? Uh, they're completely different cars. And with, a, with a Mercedes, it's you know, 700 horsepower, front, front engine car, you know, big wheels, a lot of aerodynamics and a lot of mechanical grip. With a Porsche, it's a bit different to a um, rear engine car. Um, it's just a, lo a lot of understeer from the rear engine. Um, smaller tyres, less aero and a sequential gearbox where the, uh, the Mercedes has paddle shift gearbox. Um, it's got A's as traction control and um, ABS. So that definitely, you know, it takes some, um, getting, it takes some time to get used to. But uh, yeah, definitely very different cars. As a racing driver, the ABS thing sort of uh, in, interests me. I mean, how different is it and how much do you have to change your technique? Because we see, like, even in Formula One with Kimi Raikkonen at the moment saying with their fly-by-wire system in Formula One, that lack of feedback is really throwing him big time. Yeah, definitely. It's you know, completely different. In a, in a Porsche, um, 800 pounds of pressure is basically where you want to be in terms of braking in, at, at, the max, at the max performance. But um, in Mercedes, it's a bit different. It's about... 2,200 pounds of pressure. So, you know, at each stop, 2,000, 
2,000 pounds of pressure is a lot on your left foot. So, you know, definitely training and I'm, um, I'm with the Airbus Academy this year. So they put me on to, you know, um, a nutritionist for a heat, eating, an eating plan and um, a personal trainer as well. So get a lot of training done for, you know, for, for the stops I have to do in the race. So, yeah, it definitely is a big change. You had a couple of one-hour races out at Sandown, and that's that's good. But the race that's coming up at Phillip Island in a couple of weekends' time, that's really what these cars were made for, these longer races, 101 laps, driver changes. Uh, looking forward to it? Yeah, definitely looking forward to it. Um, I had a bit of a taste of, a taste of it at the Bathurst 12-hour race in a Porsche there, so I, I know um, how to do driver changes properly and pit stops, so that's you know, an unknown out of the way. But um, definitely what the experience of I've had with the Mercedes is in the longer runs, it definitely you know, finds its feet. You know, in a sprint race, it's, it's still pretty quick, but it's, you know, it could, it's got more potential in the longer distance races. So we're really looking forward to you know, tackling Philip Island and the Merck. Well, of course, just quickly, well, before we wrap it up, uh, your, your team boss, Betty Clemenko, won't be in Perth this weekend with the V8 supercars. She'll be uh, in a Sydney hospital somewhere, I believe, getting, uh, getting operated on. Do you know if she'll be down for Phillip Island? Oh. Or at this stage, uh, this stage, she laid up for a while? Oh, I'm not too sure. You know, Betty's, you know, Betty's awesome for the sport, and you know, I'm proud to be a driver for her. But, yeah, I'm not, I'm not too sure what she's got planned. But um, Daniel Kaminka, her husband, runs the, um, the Erebus Mercedes GT team. Um, he just took over it this year and you know, he's a great guy and he runs the team very professionally and very well. So it's, it's great to be with the team. So we'll see how we go. Philip well, Island. you'll certainly be, you and Jack will certainly be a very hard, uh, very hard act to, to get past at uh, Phillip Island. Best of luck for, for that race and also for the rest of the year. But for now, Richard Musket, thanks for joining us in Pit Lane. Thanks for having me. And thank, uh, now coming up, we're going to take a break and when we come back, we're going to uh, catch up with all the international news plus some great music coming up to take us out. You're watching In Pit Lane. We'll be right back.